So those of you who know anything about scents, high loads and no note, anything, anybody who knows anything about scents, right? High loads, high, blah, 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 blah. Anybody who knows anything. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. It's Love Always Endures. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So today I wanted to do something that is like extra, extra late. I know that everybody has already done a review on this, an open boxing, a haul, a talk through, a walk through. Like I am fully aware that I am late to the party on this one. However, as late as I am, I have to tell you that this has been monumental for me in changing the way my wash days have been going. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Pantene Gold Series. What? So first I wanna start out by talking to you about the shampoo. And I want you to notice something. I'm gonna hold up three bottles here and you're gonna tell me what you notice about the three bottles. So this is the shampoo. This is the co-wash, okay? And this is the conditioner. So can you tell, do you see the size difference that's going on here? The black scientists that got together to create this, they knew what they were doing as far as size. Every natural knows that you're gonna need about twice the size conditioner of shampoo. Even if you shampoo every wash day, you're just gonna use a lot less. And so the fact that this is like double the size, now my bottle's a little flat now because I've been using it, but this is a big deal. And the co-wash compared to the shampoo, like do you see, huh? like look, it's a bigger bottle. I have started shampooing my hair every single wash day. I fell into the trap that a lot of us fell into of believing that shampoo was just so damaging to our hair that we should avoid it. I literally was avoiding shampooing. I would only do it if I like went swimming and knew I had like chlorine in my hair or it had just been a really long time. And I'm just like, what was the last time I shampooed? It's been that long, I should probably shampoo. And now I shampoo every single wash day. And when I tell you that the shampoo process is not as stripping and as drying and as horrible as I expected it would be, it did take a little getting used to, but combined with a pre-poo beforehand, shampooing is actually been changing the game for me, yeah. So this is a great shampoo. This is the Moisture Boost shampoo that they have. Um, they also have a sulfate-free shampoo. I've not had my hands on that one. Um, this one has sulfate as the very second ingredient, so I might try that one when this one runs out, but I have a ways to go. The co-wash. So though I'm not a co-washer anymore, I use this every single time I wash. So what I typically would do on my shampoo days is I would shampoo twice, condition once. Shampoo twice, condition once. And now I shampoo once, co-wash once, and condition once. It's like genius to me, it's genius because this is the thing. So this product, the co-wash, feels a lot more moisturizing than the shampoo, but it doesn't feel as moisturizing as the conditioner. So it's a really great middleman in between so that I'm not doing like strip, strip, condition. It's like strip, Strip moisturize, condition, you know what I mean? So yeah, these three on my wash day, this combo has been amazing. I get out of the shower and my hair already feels soft. Like that has never happened to me on a shampoo day. Like, yeah, I can tell that my hair has been conditioned, but my hair never really feels like soft, soft after shampooing. Like I always feel like I have to like really get in there with the oils, with the deep conditioner, with the treatments, with the, with the heating cap. Like I really usually have to do a whole lot to feel like I'm getting that moisture barrier built back up. It was actually taking me about two wash days after my shampoo day, right? So two co-wash days, right? To really feel like I was getting my hair back to the moisture level that I liked. So yeah, this has been, yeah. So as far as um, deep conditioner, I have the deep conditioner repairing mask. Now this one does not look like, it does not have the purple Afro girl on it, but this is the exact same deep conditioner. It's just not, it's just old packaging. Okay, this jar is $15 and I have found it very difficult to locate online. Um, 
I have not found it in the store. I've only found it online, and like I said, it's $15. So I recently came across this bad boy, which is part of the Rose Gold series. If you'll notice, the color is a little on the pinker side. So it's gold series, but it's the packaging is rose gold. They have a hair repair line. So this is a lot easier for me to get my hands on. I can buy it at my local Walmart and it's half the price. So with that being said, I decided to try this one out and I have to say that I'm happy with both. They both work equally well. I'm happy with both of them just exactly the same. So you wanna know which one I'm gonna be repurchasing when I run out? This one, obviously. I've been bit by the budget bug. This one, it's thinner and milkier than any of the deep conditioners that I'm habitually drawn to. Because y'all already know I love my Shea Moisture Manuka honey, okay? But that stuff is thick. Like I could literally hold the bottle like this upside down and it wouldn't come out. Now this stuff would eventually come sliding out. So the texture is a little bit different than I'm accustomed to for a deep conditioner or for like a hair mask. However, I have low density hair, which means my hair is thick and it looks thick, but when we really get down to it, my hair is on the thinner side from a density standpoint. My hair follicles on my scalp don't have that many strands coming out. So for instance, people who have high density hair may have one hair follicle with like seven strands coming out. I think I have like two or three strands coming out. What I'm saying is something thinner like this and on the milkier side actually works really great for my hair. It doesn't weigh my hair down and I don't have to add oil to it. Now I still do add oil to it, but when I get those really, really, really thick hair masks, I have to add oil to thin it out. I have to. One thing I love about this line is that everything smells so good and it all smells the same. Anybody who knows anything about scents, right? High notes, low notes, you already know layering is the best way to have a scent last on your body, on your skin, on your hair, on your clothes, whatever, layering scents. And layering basically means bringing in the same scent multiple times in different forms, okay? Pulling in your raspberry lotion with your raspberry body splash, with your raspberry perfume, with your raspberry deodorant. You see what I'm saying? This is the gold series smell. Now, I, I don't really know how to describe. <sighs> I don't know how to describe it, but it just smells good. And they all smell the same. So. You're literally layering with shampoo, conditioner, deep conditioner, leave-in, edge tamer, oil, buttercream, everything you could think of just gets layered and layered and layered and layered and your hair just smells really good. Leave-on detangling milk and then I've got their curl defining pudding. These are the two products that I use as stylers and when I say stylers I mean my hair is wet, I'm styling my hair, these are the two things that I use. Yes, I do combine my stylers with my oil of choice. So that's usually coconut oil, avocado oil, and grapeseed oil. But for the most part, these are the two stylers that I use. I have to say that I enjoy the leave-in um, detangling milk. It works fine. I wouldn't say that it's really super detangling, to be honest, um, just because I feel like my hair already gets so softened from the deep conditioner or the hair mask. And also too, I deep condition and then I detangle with the deep conditioner in. So I don't actually need to detangle my hair by the time I get to this step, but it does feel moisturizing and it does smell good. It's not the most moisturizing thing, but I feel like it complements the line really, really well. This hair pudding, I'm still trying to figure out what's the best way for me to use it. I've used it on a braid out. I've used it on a protective style, like a braid down protective style, like my little, French braids. I have not used it as a wash and go. It's a little on the stickier side to me. So it's a pudding, but it's almost translucent. You see that? It's kind of got like a translucent vibe to it. And I always assumed puddings would go on, they would be a lot thicker and creamier, whereas this has almost like a jelly type custardy type vibe to it. So still trying to figure this one out. Not sure if I'm gonna repurchase it for sure. One thing that I do think about it is that it gives my hair a little stickiness and it doesn't, my hair doesn't dry as well with this as it does with like a real pudding consistency, like a creamy pudding. Um, but it's all right. It's okay. Like, it's okay. These two are both okay. This one's more okay than this one. I went through my shampoo situation, I went through my deep conditioners, I went through my stylers, and so now when it's time to maintain my hairstyle throughout the week, then I, these are the products that I use. The Curl Awakening Spray, I do like. It smells amazing, but I have to say, it's the texture of water, it is not water. And the reason I say that is because 
if you overdo it with this, your hair will feel kind of sticky, and I did not like that. So I learned very quickly that this is gonna be great to awaken my curls, right? It's gonna do what it says it's supposed to do, but it's not really good on wash day. I was using this on wash day in the place of my Jamaican black castor oil water or my aloe water, and it's not good. It's not, a, it's not comparable with those. This is not really water. It has something else in it that makes your hair sticky and tacky if you use too much at least for me. So my best combo when I'm refreshing, when I'm fluffing, when I have an old wash and go or an old braid out that I'm just trying to bring back to life and moisturize a little, I'm gonna use the Curl Awakening Spray, I'm gonna use the Hydrating Buttercream, and then I'm gonna follow it up with the Intense Hydrating Oil. So this is something else that they have, Rose Gold. There's a repairing, overnight repairing oil or something. Haven't tried it out. Even though this is called an oil, this really gives me serum vibes. Like if I were to squeeze this out of here, it will be white, clear, and a little bit goopy. Like, it's serum. It's serum-y to me. It's not oily to me. Like it's great to take out twists and to take out braids to give your fingers a little bit of slip. And then, like I said, after I do my curl awakening spray and I do my buttercream, I just kind of rub a little bit of that in my palms and then just kind of go through it. But it's not a replacement for my coconut oil and it's not a replacement for my grapeseed oil or my avocado oil. So just keep that in mind as well. These are th three things when I'm just kind of proofing the fro and kind of getting things back together. These are the three products that I will use throughout the week to get to that to get to that point. I also have their Edge Tamer. I have to tell you that I'm not super convinced that it's better than what I currently use. I currently use Boost Edge Control and I have been using it for a while. However, I have been trying to give this one a shot and kind of balance it out and figure out exactly um, when's the best time to use this because I have learned that my hair will get used to something and it will stop working. So for fear of my boost, to give up on me, I do use this every now and then, but it does not hold. I did find it to work. I just didn't feel like it had that great of staying power, but I'm gonna continue to try it out and see um, and try to see if I can better balance my edge control options so that I don't run out of options. All right, everyone, that's all I've got for you today. I hope I covered everything. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the description box below. If you found that there is one of these products or more than one of these products that I'm using incorrectly or that could work better, you know, doing it this way opposed to this way, please let me know. I hope those of you who are looking for a full line that is not expensive, give this one a shot. It's definitely worth it. And I know there's lots of politics about it, you know, Pantene is not black owned. Pantene kind of jumped on the bandwagon of natural hair shortly after all these other natural brands came out. However, they have been created by black scientists. So there are people who understand our hair, who put this product together. And like I said, from the price point standpoint, you really can't beat it. And it does a good job. It really does a good job. So let me know what you think. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.